What is going on guys? Wiser here and I am coming to you with a very special episode. I'm here live once again with Kadik. How you doing buddy? Hey man, it's good to be back. Oh yes, it sure is. We are bringing you, I believe it's episode six now of our base building series. Uh, kind of our sort of conclusional slash transitional video into uh, what we had planned uh, to do in the future for our base building series for One Hive Labs. Uh, today we are going to talk a little bit about queen walks and queen charges and just little things you might be able to do to deter uh, your base from getting just destroyed by a queen charge because it's very, very, uh, a very, very overpowered strat at the town hall nine level right now. Um, and then, yeah, we'll kind of go into our next segment of uh, what we are planning on doing uh, in the future for this base building series. So I'm just going to hop over and take a look at Caddick's wonderful test base that he has brought to us so many <laughs> times. Um, so Caddick, fill us in a little bit. Obviously, um, the queen charge specifically, but obviously the queen walks have always been very viable. Um, and people are really starting to use these rages and wall breakers and letting her into sections of the base. And it seems almost undefendable at times. What, uh, give us some insight on that. Yeah. So the queen charges, I've been using them uh, myself recently a lot and I'm loving them. It's amazing. Like any anti three base can be tripled using this style. So, yeah, as a base builder, it's kind of disheartening to have this because there's not much you can do against it. There's a couple of tricks, but then again, um, using a rage on four healers, I mean, nothing is going to stand up against it uh, except for maybe a P.E.K.K.A. So, yeah, um, the basic thing I want to show you guys here is uh, how to defend a little bit, how to force some stuff, make it harder. I mean, in the end, that's the goal. Make it as hard as possible and um, making people want to do something else on your base. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely deter people from uh, charging or walking places, right? Like you you can kind of take value away from certain areas that just doesn't really make it make sense. But then when you start taking value away from the areas, well, kind of defeating the whole purpose to begin with. So uh, it's, it's tough, right? It's tough to judge, well, where is someone gonna walk your base? Um, and where is someone now going to charge into your base? Maybe via some earthquakes or in wall breakers or a jump. Um, so what kind of things, uh, can you do to, to, to deter it? I guess it was probably your best way to say it. Yeah. So the main issue with the queen charge will always be the time factor with uh, the 30 extra seconds, as always, it makes it horrible to defend. Um, but try to use storages like the town hall or the dark elixir storage, or even the CC troops like a golem in there or the CC itself to defend against it. Yeah. I mean, they will take up a lot of time. And if you can slow her down enough, maybe he's going to run out of time. Um, so that's the main thing uh, to do against it. And then um, the second thing is basically having a lot of point defenses concentrated in one area. And I showed that here on the left side of the screen uh, in the circle there. Uh, there's an Expo there, there's a Cannon there, there's Tesla there, and even um, the Arch Tower, and most more importantly, the Sweeper. The Sweeper combined with a lot of point defense has a high chance of forcing the enemy Arch Queen ability. Mm -hmm. So combining that with, uh, for example, a P.E.K.K.A. and the CC uh, can really screw up an attack. So um, what you're trying to do as a base builder is try to force a uh, rage, try to force an ability or force um, as much time as possible. That's really what it comes down to. You're not, you're not almost all the time, not going to be able to actually kill the Archer Queen, but what you can do is kill off the person's rages and abilities quicker. Um, so she doesn't get, to the to the main meat of the base that she's trying to get to or you know like in this example uh you wouldn't want her to get both of the air defense in on the left side right so you, you force those rages basically from the time she gets dropped she's almost going to need one right away right that sweeper is probably going to force an ability in there too by the time she gets through that expo and even is thinking about going up to that you know next air defense up there <laughs> she has no rages or ability left so um sort of looking for little successes, right? Like forcing forcing those spells yep. to get used earlier than they wanted, especially if you can force that ability 
before that before the person had planned to use it um you're in pretty good shape i would say even even against a, a queen charge because like you said it comes down to time so if you can get her into a position of the base where she was supposed to have a rage to rip through a lot of buildings and continue on but doesn't have that rage it's going to take her so much longer he's going to have to, the attacker is going to have to go ahead and and start with the rest of their attack um, without getting all of the targets that they wanted to get, right? So little victories you're looking for when you're talking about defending this stuff, right? Yeah, basically. And the most important thing of all is the ability. Um, I mean, if that's gone, there's no room for error anymore. Nope. So keep that in mind. Try, try to force that one. Uh, so the next thing you can do to defend against it um, is of course grounded expos. I've been trying to use this uh, quite frequently. They don't actually make it impossible, but they make it harder. I mean, the range is so large that even on a great distance, you can have two point defenses hitting her. Um, for example, here at two o'clock at the army camp, while the expo is already hitting her as well. So uh, as you know, uh, one expo and two point defenses make her go down quite quickly, even with four or five healers. Um, so you're forcing a rage there, which is a big win. Yep. Now, like everything in base um, building, <laughs> when you ground your expo, you're slightly more, uh, you know, you're going to open yourself up for air attacks slightly because all of a sudden you ha only have one expo that targets air, but you got to pick your poison, right? Yep, you, you definitely do. And I found it quite doable to defend against uh, air attacks in general um, compared to ground attacks. Recently, I think uh, the ground attacks are actually stronger than air attacks, or at least in my experience. And so I've been focusing on uh, defending ground attacks more and more because it's, it actually is possible to defend against air attacks. Yes, it is. You know, like... I find Lalo's require very, very good deployment. First of all, uh, you know, you're, you're limited in the amount of troops you have um, really generally you're only going with about three lava hounds and 14 balloons. So you've got to be very conservative and very on point with your spells or, and your deployment. And it can quite easily go wrong. And, and we all know if a Lalo goes wrong, it's going wrong. You're it goes right. wrong. Yeah. But a ground attack. There's you, no stopping it at that point. You know, like a go, uh, something with Valks or like, you, you know, like you're saying, like a queen charge with just a standard shattered Goho. Um, you know, you, right now as it is, you can manage to eliminate a double giant bomb, um, a bunch of point defense, get 30, 40% of the base, then send in your uh, golem and kings at the queen, get rid of the queen. And then you really only have, you know, a few compartments of defenses left. I don't know how many recaps I've done recently where... By the time they're sending in their hogs, there's two or three compartments of defenses for them to go through, right? So it doesn't matter yep. if you only have eight. It's 60 or 70 percent of the base that's gone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, the last thing I wanted to mention about queen walks is um, making the funnel hard. There's so many times I've seen a raid go gone completely wrong because the queen went the wrong way. Actually, recently last war I had one when my queen went unexpectedly went beating on a wall instead of walking around. That cost me a three-star. Yep. Um, so forcing that is actually possible. It's really hard to do. It's always There's always a way to, I mean, work around it, so to say. But you can make it as tough as possible. And uh, on the three o'clock section right here, um, I've actually demonstrated this. So imagine someone wanting to walk from three o'clock like right over here downwards because of this double giant bomb for example if you want to eliminate that um the thing you have to note here is this small builder's hut first of all it's kind of out of range but not really i mean if someone uh, let me remove some stuff uh, if someone were to drop their queen here and they will target the lab first, then the mortar, then stop up towards the archer tower, maybe the cannon. And then they will want to walk towards the dark elixir drill and then the builder's hut. The builder's hut makes her stand like right on the edge here and lure her over, like lure her all the way into the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So it's possible by 
um, strategic placing of trash buildings to make it really hard to make a funnel and actually lure her the wrong way. Um, the same goes for this lab right there. I've actually used that in uh, the last scrim against the um, Crystal Warrior. Uh, Soon Thorne, uh, the master of Queen Walks himself, actually got trapped by the, uh, that. It's on his uh, own recap of the war. Um, the Queen went the wrong way because of a building just like that. Yeah. He managed to readjust, which is really impressive. But nonetheless, as a, from a base building perspective, that was a huge success. And when Caddick uh, saved guys, the Queen walked the wrong way. Is, is it, another big piece, too, is, um, I think, as an overall sense, is if a lot of the fundamentals that we've already talked about are good in your in your base, like chamber sizing, um, you know, looking at this this chamber, right? You put the crop expo back there; it's out of range of a queen walk, right? Um, but you purposely do the opposite for this little spell factory there, um, in hopes, like you just said, a queen standing here. Well, it's going to go to reach up to that spell factory, and then probably up to this one. It might even take. You know, start to go up instead of down, um, right? Uh, another point I was going to make as well: uh, if you're if you have proper chamber sizing to combat earthquakes, well, there's a deterrent for queen charges right there, right? If you can make uh, your base so that uh, you cannot get a lot of access via one earthquake, um, or obviously four earthquakes, but <laughs> you're, you're having a success against queen charges right there because I, I can't count how many times I've seen now on bases where uh, you just earthquake a section and it opens up so much um, that if you let a queen in there with a couple rages, she's going to clean it out. doesn't matter what's in there. Yep. Yeah, and even on bases like these oh with the God. proper earthquake sizing, um, you can even earthquake just a small section right there and still open up like a big percentage of the base. But then again, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's compromising. It, yeah, uh, it's almost undefendable. This is, but my advice would be here, uh, make it as hard as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Throw in little tricks, like try little things, right? Just try and try and like we've always said, envision how a guy's going to attack your base. Okay, well, if he's going to queen walk, where would you queen walk your own base from? And then start to do little things like move your neutral buildings up a bit and see if it will yank the queen in the wrong way or or to stand there against the wall and get uh, beat on by something for too long kind of thing or just little, little things you can do to help make it more difficult. Maybe force them to use a rager ability where they don't want to and that's pretty much <laughs> the best way you're going to defend against uh, queen walks and queen charges. Yep. All right, beautiful. So um, I think that's about all we're going to really cover on that for now. I wanted to lead us into uh, something that Kadik and I were talking about doing. Uh, a lot of guys throughout these uh, base building videos have submitted us their own bases, um, asking for tips and stuff like that. So our idea is to create a Slay My Base episode where uh, you guys can actually um, email me uh, your bases now. The, there will be some contingencies, I guess, to uh, what your base must be, right? I cannot be getting sent these uh, for, uh, symmetrical form bases, right? You need to prove within the base you're sending to me that you've watched all these base building videos and you are following the principles that we've kind of laid down. And if your base fits a lot of those things, uh, I will gladly take it and try and put it out there and have Kadik and I uh, slay it down uh, in a future episode. So what we did just kind of lead into this, we asked um, some guys from Invicta and Swarm to uh, submit us a few bases and we did get a couple. Um, so why don't we hop over to Lime Killer's base there, Kadic? Let's see. This is actually not Lime Killer's. That one will be next. Oh, sorry. This is McGrady's base. Yes, it is. Good old McGrady. So um, how we're going to do this is we're going to start and we're going to break it down. Um, maybe you can tell us how we bring it down because I know you wrote down <laughs> the steps we are going to break it down in, <laughs> which I did I not. I didn't even write them down. Oh. Um, the basic st steps of base building for me always are, first of all, the queen, uh, then the compartments, and then moving on towards the air defenses, because after that, they're the most important thing. Um, and then, well, 
obviously following that is the air defense in general, and then move on to stuff like queen walks, like hogs, well, mainly hogs first. And um, yeah, concluded with uh, stuff like Falks, but it's it's hard to defend those. So yeah. let's first stick to the base. Yeah, we'll start with the basics. So when we look at this base, obviously the first thing we're looking at is this queen. Is that queen. Now it's right dead smack in center. <laughs> come on, McGravy. What's with the centralized queen? <laughs> now you can I know this is a base for a simultaneous uh, meeting limit, apparently. What the heck? Interesting. Just and reload yeah, the base. It should. Work. It re reloaded. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Someone else just joined though. You probably screwed it up on us, but anyhow, first yeah, thing so that we can say about this base is you can pretty much pick from twelve o'clock all the way to around the clock to twelve o'clock. You could pick which entry you wanted to go to, and you could basically wall break. Not everywhere, but almost everywhere you could pretty much wall break and jump or just earthquake and get access to the queen, right? Yeah, so so yeah, there's no real projection for the queen except for her being in the center, right? Yeah, so you can just pick and choose wherever you want to come from. And uh, that really is the main downfall of this base. Like the everything else that we're going to say actually um, follows out of the, the queen being so centralized. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I definitely think even if you'd switch the king and the uh, and the queen, but but still, uh, queen chamber definitely needs work there. Um, it's just too easy, right? I mean, she. It's just too easy to go from any angle, pretty much. I think the only angle you can come in is from right here with the double wall breaking. But why would you come in from there? <laughs> Other than that, I mean, anywhere, anywhere else. No, that's difference. not a real reason. Yeah. No, like I know I'm skipping ahead a bit, but um, imagine two golems. You do have to do something about that archer tower. But coming in, that's the main downfall of having a centralized queen. It's a shattered laloon. Yeah. And in this case, um, you just have the wall breaker here. Use only one spell and the poison for the CC. And you get the queen. You get a part of the Tesla farm. You get two air defenses if you are smart. Uh, a couple of uh, three uh, archer towers, which is half of the archer towers. And that just leaves your base crippled. Yeah. Like that's a huge, huge entry point right there, right? With the Tesla farm there. I mean, not to mention as well, definitely not a huge fan. Of three Teslas side by side by side exactly like that. Um, I generally always try and at least put them in separate compartments. Like even if you had one here and one there, you're still getting, you know, the same effect, but they're at least protected by separate walls. Um, not to mention a couple balloons under a rage are are just literally gonna gonna one shot those. Like they don't even have to go to from defense to defense to defense. They're just gonna be in one spot drop one and you'll probably get two and then move over one and get the other two um i don't know i definitely am not a fan of side by side teslas i mean you can kind of do it strategically but not um, not just one after another like that no nope. so then let's move on to the compartment sizing mm -hmm. uh, what i like about this base is that there's a lot of compartments i mean a go wipe will struggle immensely against this base so that's a really good thing uh, also, centralized queen is really good against the go wipe, in my opinion, because the packers will want to break through a lot of walls before they get to her. Um, so that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Um, also, a kill squad will get landlocked really quickly. Um, so yeah, I really I, I'm a fan of that. The only thing I'm not a fan of is um, an earthquake. Imagine right over there. It may be a dead zone, but it's so small. Troops will even a jump. They will take that jump. And they will even jump all the way towards the core. They might get distracted on the side here. But afterwards, they still jump towards the sweeper. Mm -hmm. Same story goes uh, on the other side. They will get distracted, but then jump back over towards the wizard tower and move mm -hmm. on. But so I'm counting that one earthquake well. right there. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it just opens up so much of the base. Look at this. If you come in from the top. That's 80% of the base almost. Yeah. And I mean, same kind of thing on, on the others. Oh my God. 
How did this change like that? <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, <laughs> the same thing for down here. I mean, here, right here. Right. Yeah. Um, you're just going to get so much access, like a max attack or a shattered Lalo, like you said, from uh, coming back from from this side over here. You know, quick wall break. You're getting a huge value out of that out of that kill squad. Yeah, it basically still opens up most of the base. And just imagine uh, a heal spell over here with the king uh, enraged with all the little barbs. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's those... nothing stopping them. So so they will um, kill all of the Teslas. They will um, yeah, even get the expo, probably get the sweeper, maybe even get that sweeper. So that really opens up the base uh, yeah. for a max attack, basically. Um... And the worst thing... Um, against the Laloon, I mean, we're there already, um, is these two bombs. They're not away from the Queen. Like, the easiest access for a Shattered Laloon, the black bombs are there. So, yeah. basically, in this case, you only need two Lava Hounds instead of three because all of the black bombs are now, already again, gone. I think I think this all still boils down to the centralized Queen because when you're looking at your Queen, well, technically, any of those air defense, right, are too are too close not necessarily too close to the queen but um what like if your bombs are up here well it's the same story right you could get the same value pretty much earthquake coming from that side as you could from this side you know yeah and that's may one of the main reasons why a centralized queen is uh yeah well a bit of an outdated uh way of uh, building bases yeah. uh, one thing i was going to mention that i did like but I think it kind of works against them is even though, yeah, those, uh, the earthquake uh, is going to take care of that. I think what McGrady was trying to do here was if you dropped a jump spell, he's trying to, you know, the, like the more small compartments you have when someone's going to drop a jump, the kind of more tricky it gets for your golems. Um, like, I think he was trying to like force with that little dead zone. He was trying to force stuff to the outside, even though it, his queen being right there completely negates it or, and makes it not work properly. But, um, you know, if his queen say was down where this expo is, it would, it would at least be better off because then he, what he's doing is for, uh, having it over there, he's kind of negating someone coming in from here. I mean, the fact that you can still earthquake through it, but at least that top yes, section does. of the base, it makes it does not make it the same. You can still come in from this side and get your two air defense, get your queen, but it makes it a lot more difficult to come in from the other side, right? So you're forcing your attacker to come from the one side as opposed to whatever side he chooses from. Yeah, I think your suggestion of moving the queen there is a really nice one. Uh, swapping these three around, like the king towards the queen, and then the queen towards the expo, and the expo towards the uh, king pad. Um, I think that's a really good suggestion. I mean, uh, you could move this uh, air defense over here. Like, uh, you have to move all of the air defenses, but imagine one over here, approximately one over there, and one around here. Um, that would force them either to come through the whole of the base, or only get the queen and none of the air defenses. Yeah. So that would be a really nice idea, actually. Yeah, I like that. At least as a quick fix there, right? Uh, so let's move on. Yeah, um, it's a pretty quick fix. Let's take a look. This is a four, a four singles base. What is what is your opinion of the single bomb locations? Um, first of all, four single base is um, can trip people up on a first hit but it uh, might be more difficult to defend um, second and third hits. Uh, but then again, what base holds up? So it's a good thing to split them up. Um, in this case, um, there's three bombs on one side of the queen um, with her still being easily accessible. Now, let's imagine if the queen is over here. That makes it a lot tougher to get to it. Um, but right now, those three bombs can be gotten with uh, a queen... Uh, with an entry from, uh, I think, 12 o'clock. Uh, let's see how I would attack this. It's a bit tricky to get to, to the third one. Um, yeah, it would be. But, but I do gotta, believe it's quite easily triggered. you got to think, as long as that archer tower goes down... Um, yeah, it's gone. You would need In those that case, the giant bomb is gone because yeah. Hawks will path. Yeah. Yeah. 
which you should. So get actually, this would be a really high them. value queen walk. Actually, this would oh, be a yeah. really high value queen walk. Yeah, good point. Um, start around here. You need to take this one out, but that could be done with one hog or two hogs. Uh, split it off right here, and then walk it down, which is going to take a long time with the town hall and all of this trash here. So uh, that's a good defense against it, actually. Yeah. Um, but meeting up with a kill squad in here and then moving in could take a lot of the base out. Yeah, because another thing it's is just an too, idea. I'm not a fan of... I like to at least force... Um, what's What am I trying to say? If you're going to jump into the chamber where the queen's going to be, like one jump spell, right, is going to get you in there, you essentially can get up to this, you know, this wall on the base, which that's, that's pretty deep in the base, in my opinion, for only bringing one jump spell. Like if, if someone's just going to bring a jump with no wall breakers to get into my queen chamber, I, I literally only want him getting my queen chamber. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. The problem is with the more spread out bases, you're always going to get that. So it's always a, a trade off and moving more defenses away from the queen. Mm -hmm. So in this case, having four Teslas next to the queen would actually be detrimental. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's just such a high value jump. You know, the CC is right there. Yeah, in this case, it is. Yeah. Right. Uh, everything is right there. One jump. Like you said, you know, you start a queen walk up here. You're basically going to get all of that stuff. And then you're going to go in and jump and get the rest of that with one jump in your queen walk. And then look at what's left. Two single bombs and basically. It's not too much. Runs. Yeah, not much at all. Okie doke. So let's move on to the spring traps. And yep. on this base, I really like them. That's a really a big plus. Um, even this one, like even when people surgical in hogs, like straight onto the defenses, I've seen them walk over that trap and still trigger three hogs. Yeah. So those work, just for your information. Um, all of the spring traps are in between defenses. They're just snuck right in between. Um, I mean, you could double up here, but I mean, those really are nice details. They're, they're nicely spread out. And the only area I see where there's not many spring traps is, uh, is uh, th this area. But then again, there's Teslas over there. So big chance the kill squad will want to come there. So mm -hmm. it's really nicely done. Um, the only real comment I have on this one is uh, this spring trap might not be too effective. Um, when coming, yeah, it, it's, it's a tricky one. So because yeah, uh, Hoxel Path in a wonky way down there yeah. yeah it's the same story as uh, <coughs> like the compartment on the left side but then again because they're probably standing on the edge here um they tend to not trigger it correctly yeah. i mean it's tricky I, you can't try it out um but i think i would move that one you know what i might do in as a, another quick fix um get this cannon moved over so it's it's in this spot and then pop it right there yeah, for example, those are my favorite uh, spring traps. Kind of you do that corner to just corner. Just with the one touching. It. It's almost not quite, if uh, if this one, if the expo was moved one more tile up, that would be, in my opinion, the that would ideal, be perfect. yeah, the perfect spring trap. That's uh, the ideal. You can't do yeah, that always. I do, when I'm setting up my bases, I look to create spots like that. Um, but it, you're not going to get every spring trap like that. Like if you can in a base, hey, awesome. But I, I still have yet to do that. <laughs> I've, I literally look for it, and uh, there's only so many. You can set up a few of them, right, and make them make them good. But um, yeah, I think as an yeah. overall statement, though, uh, great spring traps, though, Grady. Yeah, definitely. And uh, there's a couple of last uh, details. Uh, first of all, the CC. In this case, it's lurable with just one barb over there. I mean, drop it here. It will probably target the army camp or the the builder's yeah. hut and probably empty the whole CC. Uh, maybe bring a second barb to, to be sure. Just in case. I would but... move the CC more in in this case. Like as we said in a previous episode, try to force at least five spaces and to have it lurable. Um, or make it a really hard lure. In this case, stack it up with archers. That could trip someone up, but I don't think so. I still don't think so. Yeah, even still, it's too easy. Like you said, your general rule um, is at least five troop space to lure your lure your whole CC. Um, 
because it's the right like we talked about in the CC video your CC is not the most important thing anymore it's still an important aspect of your defense however um, it's not something you need to desperately protect but you can quite easily make it so someone's got to at least at least drop a hog to, to get a, get your CC out there right yes so the next thing is the uh, skeleton traps in this case I think they're quite close together um, making it quite possible to have just uh, one poison getting both of them and also um, a kill squad from almost any direction is going to get this spring trap uh, I mean skeleton trap and um, I don't know if that's a good thing or no uh, depends on the base in this case I think it's not a good thing to have it there um, I mean you're, you're ne gonna need to heal or rage something over there anyway so I don't think it's gonna get much value the other one is quite okay place. I don't think it's going to get uh, triggered by uh, a kill squad. Maybe even move it over a little further to, uh, to the 3 o'clock position, like right ne next to the air defense. Um, I mean, on this base, what do you think are the most likely hawk spots? Yeah, probably 9 and 3. Just a quick question. Probably 9 and 3. I thought the same. So, because this can be queen walked, I would move it in a little bit further, uh, like for example over there, like right next to that, that air defense, and same story right here, yeah. right next to that air defense, just out of range of a queen walk, um, but it's going to trigger on hogs, and also no. on this base, set them to air, basically. Um, yeah, set them to air, <laughs> great. Uh, but what I was going to say, something we didn't touch on, we talked about the CC, but also as another little thing you could potentially do for queen walks or charges is play skeleton traps where you think they're going to come because she does take time away to kill those skeletons while she's getting beat um it be, and what if you can time it so she's got a burner rage or especially an ability well skeletons are, are on her that is huge huge success yeah definitely one. Right. So that's another reason to have a skeleton trap more in the inside of the base. Yeah, good point, man. Yeah. I don't like so I, the I, very last it thing before too, because um when I'm doing super queens on raids, and all of a sudden you drop that rage and then a skeleton trap pops up. You're like, oh come on. Oh my. I hate <laughs> yeah. it. <laughs> and it always happens. Yeah, it always happens. <laughs> so one more thing. Um the small bombs on the outsides. I like them. They're one space away from the wall, so they will uh, trip up wall breakers. Um, they're in good spots because even a, a wall breaker right there, 130 approximately, it'll walk around this barracks, but then move towards the mortar because there's a building there. So that's in the perfect spot. So yeah. I really like those. Uh, keep them there. Um, the only place I would actually move them to is down here uh, in this section. Um, maybe a couple of them. Uh, because people are going to want to answer there. Yeah, absolutely. Those air defense. Um, one thing I was... Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish your point. No, 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 no. I was going to touch on something else. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to mention the air defense placements in general. Um, I think they need huge work. I think that is... That's, that's clearly the... Um, in my opinion, other than the centralized queen, the biggest flaw to this base, McGrady. These two guys right here, specifically... Um, yeah, not that 12 o'clock one. <laughs> the reason I mentioned those, first of all, I, I think most people would probably enter from this way. I mean, even if you dropped a golem there, right? Finally, wizards are going to take it out and then it's going to move back into here. Um, sorry to get rid of this stuff, <clears throat> but these air defense are just too exposed. Uh, first of all, they're completely queen walkable. Second of all, uh, like look at this one at six o'clock. I mean, three balloons with a hound on the air defense are going to get there in a second. You don't have to use a spell. Um, so I'm not sure. I just, this, this air defense specifically at six, but also at three, I think are just very, very exposed and um, a need, you know, you have to think about how long is it going to take for balloons to get there and then on the air defense. Like you need to have. Maybe uh, like what I do, at least in my compartments where I have air defense kind of stuck out to the side, have a, have a defense on this outside. Move this cannon up right there. Um, force your attacker to have to drop multiple balloons 
to force everything onto that air defense, not just a few on the archer tower, and then they're going to go right there. Um, same thing at 12, right? Um, we don't have the top of the base there, but uh, I don't think there's any defenses on the outside of the base. So three loons straight onto that air defense. There's no, no pathing screw ups for loons. Got nothing on the outside. It's just bang, 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 arch tower, air defense. Like the, someone, someone go back to the pathing episode, right? And, and really look at, at, at that stuff and the Lalo defense specifically. Um, you, you need more stuff around your air defenses, in my opinion. Yeah, cool. So let's move on to Lime Space then. Beauty. I think we uh, smashed this one enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Tell me when it's loaded up for you. All right. So, queen placement. Let's mark her off here. That is our archer queen. Very interesting one. This is a very interesting base overall because there's a big compartment leading through the queen from one side to the other. It's uh, it can trip uh, trip people up, man. Huh? It's mm -hmm. uh, a good design. Uh, but first of all, the 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 queen. Um, yeah, she's pretty protected. She's offset. Um, I mean, whatever angle I come in from, you're forcing something uh, to get to her, at least like wall breakers over here, because she is going to jump that. Um, but then there's a lot of point defenses uh, looking at her and even the king to protect her. Um, yeah, basically the, the queen is offset. It's, it's in a different way than you usually see. Um, but I think I like it. I mean, it's always tricky. You can't tell it until it's uh, in action. But uh, overall, it follows the rules. Yeah, I think because you're definitely forcing your attacker to make a decision because there's there's no way you can um, come in from, you know, starting from this side or this side um, and expect to get all the way through that queen without some sort of double jump or, uh, yeah, really double jump. Or a heavy kill squad. Like, or a heavy, heavy kill yeah. squad, that's right. The only thing I do see is if you drop a golem over here at the Tesla, uh, breaker in here, which is a really well placed bomb right there. I mean, that will kill some wall breakers. Um, go in here and have a king swap. That is possible. Yeah. But that will always be possible. The only thing is that it does not require jump in this case. Yeah. So that's really good. I like it. It's uh, different than normal. So yeah, big plus. Absolutely. So second of all, uh, the compartments. Um, I see, let me count, six, nine compartments, which is okay. That's a decent amount. Um, yeah. Really? There's not too much I can say about it, except for this wonky compartment, which o does open up for a lot of different style of attacks. That's the only disadvantage of having that. Yeah. I mean, uh, your Valkyries or King will naturally just funnel in and just walk down the road. That's yeah, the that's so, the disadvantage of having that. I, I don't know I don't know exactly what the purpose was for that long open compartment. I'm not a fan just because of that simple fact. Like just having a wall here regardless like a one a few wall spaces right there forces a jump. Like the forces an earthquake. It forces right, you can't just walk through. I mean, maybe that's kind of the Maybe that was the idea is what I'm saying, right? Anything coming here, he wants them to naturally go down that way and not across. Even if there was a jump there, I don't know. Maybe that was the idea behind it. Yeah, but I'm I'm actually a big fan of that idea. I had the same idea of walling that off. That would be actually a really good improvement. Yeah, because it's still, walling that off still kind of gives you the same effect, right? Like if you jumped over that and came in from here, your golems are kind of going to naturally walk off to the side still, um, but you're 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 not allowing someone to come in from twelve and just walk down this alleyway without burning a spell. Yeah, it's basically forcing another spell, which is uh, which is yeah. huge, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so next uh, the air defenses. Um, they're offset from the queen, as you can see. Uh, in this case, they're really close together. So once again, what I said with the, the king swap. Imagine. Uh, that happening. Uh, I mean, it does need require a high level king, so keep that in mind. Uh, but if you have a, queen, a king swap, you, you basically eliminate this section. Um, that's gone. Um, that leaves you with a kill squad. 
with the queen to take out those four air defenses and basically have um, only loons left um, needed to take out the rest of the base, which is only a small portion of the base. That's I mean, true. there's Tesla and, and just an expo to Archer Towers. That's not too much. So that's a really big weakness of this base. I mean, heck, if you're able to abuse it. Looking at it, what we were just talking about, right? Earthquakes, wall breaks. Mm -hmm. With the queen, with the queen charge, four healers, rage, rage, and you're, the queen is probably going to get all of this. Even going to get taken out. Yes. No problem. And she will even get the enemy queen without a goal. Like you spend four healers, you bring one goal with your king here, and then you have loons to just. You don't even need to, man. Just bring a fifth healer and maybe a third rage, and you yeah. get the queen with your queen. There I would you love to hit this base that way. So man. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Your queen ends up in this compartment over that here. That would be right? awesome. She'll end up somewhere, somewhere in yeah. this vicinity, <laughs> and then you just start looning in from the back. She she's will aggro that queen. <laughs> Or just dragging it, yeah. I don't know, and swag the king. That'd be crazy. <laughs> or dragging it, yeah. Yeah, good call. Yeah. So okay. I know I know that's a bit of a stretch. I mean, the, the good thing about this, uh, uh, though, is there's a CC here. There's a town hall there. There's a storages, like three storages there. The queen will take a very long time to get through all of that. So she a very low-level queen. absolutely need two rages to burn through that in, in a reasonable amount of time to get what you At want. At the bare minimum. Yeah. Yep. Um, but in this case, it's worth it. But it's it's a it's a tough trade off. So is. in this case, improve that. Um, maybe I mean, move this wall a bit out further and move one air defense over there. I know it's a bit tricky. Well, but I was just going to say, move the if, air defense a bit further away. Even if you move this air defense into this corner, I mean, you're you're well. No, it's not going to do a heck of a lot. It's still going to help. Yeah, it's though. it's tough call. It's going to help though. I mean, it is going to help, but. But either way, it's a tough call to, to make it uh, work properly. Yeah. But I mean, I like it, man. If there's a backhand in the CC and she's beating on the town hall for the longest time while the expo is hitting her, maybe even ground that expo, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's four air defenses there, so there's no real reason to not ground it. Um, so that expo will be hitting her. A Pekka will be hitting her. Um, yeah, that could work. There's point to maybe rest. swap these two. The, yeah. the Tesla and the Archer Tower. Move that Archer Tower behind storage. Um, making a, yeah, basically forcing a rage and an ability. That could mm -hmm. really work. Yeah. Um, good. Uh, so how, how about these bomb locations? I th I'm not a huge fan of this. I was community. looking at them. Um... I don't like well, these. let's first finish up with uh, the air uh, defense. Oh, sorry. I, I like the double up, uh, doubling up on the, the black bombs next to oh, air yeah. defenses. Um, in this case, as we said, there's a chance of people uh, using dragons on your base. So maybe in this area, you could use one black bomb. So, I mean, if people are going to air attack your base, uh, they will take out three or four of these air defenses in your queen. So in your case use one or maybe even two black bombs to defend against specifically dragons or uh, stray loons. Yeah. So next, the, the double bomb set over mm -hmm. here. Um, when coming from this angle, uh, like funneling in through the air defense, they will path up over sweetly, except for maybe split it up towards the, the wizard tower. Yeah. But if you look from another angle, and that's the thing I have against this one. If you're surgically uh, deploying hogs, like even as, uh, an Asian mole, um, this double bomb set will get triggered badly. Because first of all, from the wizard tower towards the mortar, like that. And second of all, from the cannon to the air defense. So that's one of the basic rules um, with setting up a double bomb set. And you need to have this area clear. Yeah. There absolutely. cannot be defenses here. Absolutely. <clears throat> How about these singles over here? Um, from the other side, from the other side, it's a bit different because hogs will path like this towards the air defense and then go down. So that side is actually okay, even though you might think, "Wait, this area is not clear." But I think in this case, it's okay. It's yeah. a close call, though. It's yeah, still it's a close, close call. call. 
Um, it's not as exaggerated as we had talked about in the in the videos, but um, it, it's really it's really this top side that kills it. I mean, it's the uh, the difference between a textbook case versus uh, a working example in the base. Yeah. So yeah, I I think it's uh, this the other side is a good uh, good way, and um, the thing I dislike about this double bomb set as well is imagine coming in from twelve. Once again, the small bombs are over there, uh, forcing wall breaker fill. So good job on that. Um, a queen walking past here will take this out, and eliminating this double bomb set will take the mortar out, eliminating that bomb, and only leaving you with one bomb, which unfortunately can probably be triggered with one hog down there or two hogs with a, a giant something like that so that leaves you with um two or three spells for just hogs yeah just one heal over here one heal over here and you're done yeah so the investment to get to your double bomb set and your queen is uh, too low right now yeah i'd agree because like like you said it, you just come in here you're walking straight down here. You're going to get all the defenses in this section and then the queen and the CC. All right. So you're only leaving oh, the bottom over. part where, and we'll, we'll kind of go to a, another point, I guess now, uh, the spring traps, <clears throat> uh, aren't too bad. Actually. I've been kind of looking at them as we're, as we're going through here. Um, They're good. Yeah. I don't see one poor. There's only trap. one I see that's not perfect. I mean, this one is perfect. This one will trigger Hawks quite well. Um, this one is pretty much perfect. Um, this one is good. I mean, Hawks will path like this from yeah. the south up. So that's a good one. Uh, the only angle they won't trigger correctly is from this angle. I mean, they probably will not trigger that string trap, but I mean, that's sort of okay. The one I do want to talk about is this one. Even though it's straight in between two defenses, I don't think that one will trigger a lot of Hawks. I except for if they're coming from the air defense down. Yeah, because say, if, um, he sh if he shuffled, shuffled it right beside the wall, I think that would be better off. That would make it better. It's still not perfect, but it would make it better, yes. Yeah. Because the Hawks will be standing in this area or this area. So yeah, basically uh, it makes it better. Yep, that's a good one. Just because uh, I'm a big fan, Iron, when Iron Wolf was teaching me base building, um, one thing he, he he taught me was sweepers are, are his favorite things to spring trap uh, because of the surface area involved. You know everything on the expo is going to meet up right on that spot pretty much. So there's no way it's not going to trigger three. Yeah, and the thing is with uh, the two space, two by two space defenses, the hawks are going to wrap around. Yeah. So there's no way, there's no way it's not going to trigger correctly, except for maybe when coming in from the mortar. Oh yes, yeah, that's the only way I can see it trigger one or two hawks. Yeah. So it's a good spring trap. Um, I mean, you can't always have perfect spring traps, but no. the difference between two or three hogs compared to one can be huge. I mean, in the scrim uh, we had within the, the 2.0, uh, my base actually got uh, tripled by uh, Kev with a really low hero. So I was kind of upset about it because it had already defended against 3030s. Um, but because springs like this one and this one, it actually got tripled because they triggered one hog and not three. And if they had three uh, triggered three hawks, I'm still convinced it would not be in a triple. Ooh, so two hog I mean, it's, it, it sounds minute, but the difference is huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, skeleton traps in this base, I think, are slightly better than the McGrady's. Uh, they're definitely split up. Um, I think to me, uh, this bottom section is. I think this bottom one's really good. Uh, yep, that's a really good one. I might move this one somewhere over here because I feel like uh, I feel like it's, it's I feel like because the way you've set up this alley line, the alleyway here, that's generally that that half is probably where your kill squad's going to come from, meaning your hogs are going to be starting somewhere you know around there. So. Uh, not it's not necessarily a bad location. Uh, it's just if 
if it were me, I think I move it might move it like right behind that Tesla there. Yeah, and the other thing is, um, it's grounded, and there's a DGB right there. Ooh, so point. if someone's going to hog you, they're going to path there uh, with a kill squad, most likely. Yeah. So that's uh, the skellies will get triggered uh, with a kill squad. So that's uh, the most important thing. If it were grounded, I might even put it over here. Just uh, because of the exact reason ju you just mentioned before uh, with uh, the queen charge. I mean, this is actually a good spot to have it trigger, like when the queen is standing here in range of uh, the expo, in range of the CC. Yeah, she's gonna uh, hitting the town hall. I mean, that's a lot of stuff coming at the queen. So yeah, that would actually point. be a nice location. Plus, the skellies are going to get there first before that Pekka gets there while the expo is attacking them. So she's going to attack those skeletons first. Give the P.E.K.K.A. a minute to get right on top of her. You are absolutely going to burn her ability, if not kill her. Exactly. Yeah. The other uh, place I saw for this trap, um, might be not too obvious, is actually over here. Uh, right oh, around yeah. this wizard tower. Because um, an air attack will come in with loons or dragons from this area. So setting that to air and around there mm -hmm. will actually stall them quite a bit. Um, there's not too much defense, but imagine uh, a black bomb being there. Uh, th they might just be delayed enough for the queen to take out one or two, and that might be enough to save you the raid. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that covers it uh, with this base. Yeah, I think so. So uh, fantastic job, though, guys. Hopefully we didn't uh, completely shred you. <laughs> Shred you to pieces here. Um, always, always things to work on with your base building. All right. I mean, uh, uh, I, I really like this design overall line. Uh, I think it's something that you could tweak into something that's uh, that's that you could use in a, in an arranged matchup. Uh, maybe not necessarily this exact layout, but this kind of alleyway uh, forcing forcing units down that way. So. Um, it, overall, though, both of you guys, uh, good job, and uh, thanks for stepping up and uh, submitting your bases. Um, did you have anything else to add, Cad? No, I think uh, hats off to these guys for stepping up, and um, good luck for people wanting uh, to come on the show, basically. Absolutely. So, um, guys, I'm going to be putting a link to a special email um, that you can email screenshots of your bases. I just please ask you, make sure you watch the first uh, five episodes of this base building series because I will definitely not even look at your base for more than five seconds if it does not at least somewhat resemble all the fundamentals we've talked about uh, leading up to this point. <clears throat> so check out that email, you know, submit your email, uh, submit your base guys. We'll probably, because we did a little segment about Arch Queen Walks at the beginning of this, um, we probably uh, will be doing, I would say, probably three bases maybe per episode. Uh, that still has to be determined, though. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm ready to move forward with uh, uh, Slay My Base. We're going to call it, uh, um, we're going to stop the base building uh, series and call it Slay My Base from here on in because it's going to be your guys' bases getting uh, slain live on YouTube. So, uh, that'll do it for your uh, Wisdom from Wiser, though. Uh, Cad, thanks for uh, coming out. And uh, you're welcome, man. We're just trying to help you guys bag that next three star. And until then, we're out.